I would say that Azine is a self-published mini magazine. They're usually handmade photocopies, uh, works of art, really. I like the total creative freedom that zines embody, and I also like that they're often a medium for alternative voices. So you'll see like fanzines or review zines that review maybe like girl punk bands that are performing, or there could be like political zines or activist zines. Zines are fun and good to collect and a cheap way to sort of get yourself out there. Hearing about the process, hearing about how much work goes into it makes it something extraordinary. There's something about the tangibility of print that I think I romanticize a lot. People always say, oh, print is dying, but I really don't believe that. Down the road, 10, 20, 50 years, do you think that zines are still going to be around? I think they will be. This is the LA Zine Fest, which took place in February this year. Hundreds of exhibitors from all over the country gathered at this event to share their self-published works. We have a collection of about 15 artists here. Some of us have uh, multiples and some are collaborations between our members. That's the Palm Tree Cell Phone Tower Collective based out of Art Center College of Design. So this one comes with a free CD. Mm -hmm. uh, Medial art class. Yeah, this is issue number six. Our editor is standing right behind you. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, he compiled this from several of our members um, just on whatever themes are relevant to each artist. And there's some great articles and stories in there too. Very cool. Interviews with musicians. So we're seeing student work from Art Center at the Zine Fest. But how are these zines created? A six hour workshop at Art Center gives us a behind the scenes look at the making of an art zine. If you don't know who we are, but I'm Mark. This is Esther. Yes, we, we met here in the library yeah. a long time ago. Oh, good. <laughs> there you go. Okay, we're having a workshop here at Art Center College of Design, and we're going to make art, collaborative um, art, and then we're going to print it in different shapes and forms using the Xerox machine and all kinds of other tricks. And then we're going to collate it um, using all kinds of tricks and fun things. This is kind of what we're going to be doing a version of today. Uh, for the zine workshop. Um, we, we made this in, uh, collaborated with a, about, I guess, 15 artists from Sweden when we were over there for a residency last year. Um, and uh, it was about a six hour workshop where we silk screened, we drew, we Xeroxed, we collaborated, and we put together about 25 of these books. Um, they were all slightly different. They all had original uh, art in them and um, different people's work. We have little uh, writing and things. Um, so we're going to do something kind of like that um, today. We're um, going to do yeah. some collaborative drawings, yeah. um, some crazy pass around yeah. things, uh, scavenger hunt. You want to show this? This is the one we have a specialized art and design library here at Art Center. We try to include student work as much as possible. Um, so we have a lot of zines that we've gotten donated from current students or alumni of Art Center. What's so great about zines is that they're completely flexible and they could be about anything in any format. Um, they could have text or no text, all image. There's just so much flexibility. People don't have to go through all the layers of mainstream publishing, they can just get their words out there and their message out there without having to be mediated in any way. You're going to draw your cover here. It's going to be on your right hand side. And this is going to be your back cover. Well, I took um, a palette um, from the, like, the palette pad that somebody had given me. I, I make a lot of art. 2D and 3D stuff with um, when I peel off the paint from palettes like this. 
And so uh, I had one that I can't get the paint off of and I thought it'd be good for a cover. Photography, illustration, and fine art, um, political and activism, um, literary zines, those are kind of like some of the subgenres. This is a really unique one because this includes illustration as well as collaging um, because Mark and Esther have perfected this garbage scene aesthetic that they have. It's really handmade and each one is like a precious art object. So we've made tons of Xeroxes, um, the students' drawings, so we've kind of gathered them together. Um, ran down to the Xerox machine, um, Xeroxed it onto cardstock, colored papers. Um, we're kind of going to set up an assembly line of sorts. We're going to have everybody um, uh, in a, maybe an hour or two come by. And this will be kind of the guts of the zines, um, the collaboration kind of uh, part of it. So everyone's going to get uh, a few sections of, of each of these. The students have all drawn several illustrations that have been photocopied. They are now collaborating by taking pages of their own work along with classmates' works. There's going to be a lot extra, and you, what we can we'll do come is back. come back and get more. After they do this, they are stapling their booklets together. Already staples in it, so I don't. The next step is the sewing a cover on. on. So this is just one method of attaching a cover, on, kind of an old art form in a modern era. Fine. So I'll just get that lined up. So through paper, it does a decent job. There are different needles that you can get, so it cuts differently. Things like that, and you know fairly easy to use. Pull it through, cut that on. All right, so what I did is I just stitched it to the back, so now the cover is mounted. Or you can just keep sewing off. Yeah. And then, and then you can do previous. Then, yeah. I think it's done. And so you lift it up and you gently pull out. No, 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 go a little don't more. Don't go here. Like, pull go out a little more. more. Yeah, because you're going to cut here. With the collated pages stapled and the cover put on, the zines are now complete. How does it feel to have your zines completed? Um, it's very self-satisfying, actually. It was awesome. Um, being able to have a tangible piece of artwork at the end of the day is pretty amazing. And the fact that I collaborated with a lot of my friends and I got to meet some new people was awesome, too. Um, it's extremely encouraging, um, and it gets everybody realizing that they, anybody is capable of making something that's really pretty and really beautiful. So what can people do with zines after they're created? The women behind the zine, Selfish, which features poetry, narratives, and photography, show us at their first live reading. She's an LA native and a writer and editor, and she dreamed this whole thing up, so we have her to thank for it. Taylor Lerner. That's Taylor Yates, the founder of the zine, Selfish. She orchestrated the whole zine and the event. Um, thank you so much for coming today. I've always been much more comfortable behind the scenes, and so deciding to work with this group of women, it was much easier for me to just objectively view, view their work and, and help in any way that I could. It's an incredible feeling to have a tiny seed, just right? there and, and to see it actually grow into something that people not only want to be a part of but want to hear and want to witness and want to take home with them and, and have with them and read and read again hopefully. So various women have contributed to the zine. Here one of the contributors reads her piece to a live audience as a form of self-expression. Jordan had been waiting for more than an hour, but he let me cry in his car anyway. He bought me a bean and cheese burrito at a Mexican restaurant that was perfect. Well, almost perfect. That place would have been way better if it delivered. <laughs> I 
All right, those are all of our readers, and actually, you want to have them come back up? Yeah, Christina, you just sat down, but you had to come back. <laughs> we could have all of you guys come up, just so we can say thank you. Um, I think it went well. I feel a little euphoric. Um, I was just very nervous. It's our first event. There's a lot of room for error, so I'm very relieved now. There were plenty of people. People were really responsive to the material. There was laughter. I think overall, it was a great introduction to many more events to come. I've just always had a huge place in my heart for physical words, I think. I love the way that books are bound. I'm always fascinated by the way paper feels and smells. And there's a permanence to it. Blogs, you know, stories get lost. The books that have been shared with me have held a much more special place than, than just a link that someone pastes into a chat box or shares on Facebook. So there's just, there's something about the tangibility of print that I think I'll, I romanticize a lot, but I think it'll always just be irreplaceable to me. I'm Christina Wolfgram, and I contributed an essay called A Girl's Guide to Getting an IUD. It's a journey of mine that I took in South Los Angeles when I didn't have enough money to buy my own birth control, but to have a crowd even laughing at things that I never thought in my own mind um, could bring laughter. To hear them was really great, really cool, and really worthwhile. I actually do do a lot of blogging, and writing for a zine was refreshing. I didn't have to worry about numbers. I didn't have to worry about going viral or anything like that. It was really more art for art's sake, which was really great. Another reader shares a personal story. My name is Becky May. Honestly, I was really concerned that no one was going to get it and that it was just too heavy, you know. Um, dumping something like the death of your father on an audience of strangers isn't exactly something that people typically do. It was surprising, but I mean, it's great to know that people can connect with you on that kind of level. It's difficult, you know, it's one thing if you're having writer's block about, you know, a topic that you've done research on, but when it comes to something that's so emotional, um, it's definitely a different kind of writing process. What brought the most joy to me was being trusted with these really, especially in Becky's case, these very sensitive stories and moments in these, in these girls' lives. It feels pretty magical. <laughs> So the LA Zine Fest, Zine Making Workshop, and Zine Reading are just a small part of the do-it-yourself zine subculture that's here to stay despite being in the digital era.